So Ashley and Mike, thank you for joining us for a conversation about the presidential race. Uh, and let's just jump right into it. So there have been a few shifts in the past few weeks, a few surprises, none yeah. bigger than the sitting president uh, withdrawing from the race. We'd just love to hear from you about what does that mean for momentum, maybe impact in the swing states? And why don't we start with you, Mike? All right. Well, Pam, uh, first, thanks for uh, thanks for having us uh, here today. Uh, yes, there's been this has been a roller coaster of an election year, um, and the uh, with the president uh, dropping out or stepping aside for his vice president uh, last week, it's really created a, a a dynamic shift to the campaign. Um, we've been talking in the last in the last week that the uh, that the Democrats are on a sugar high. And the reason I've used that language is really because I think there was such a depression and lack of enthusiasm for the Biden for the Biden campaign that just having the vice president step forward has just as has created such a euphoria amongst Democrats that and we saw that all last week. Um, I think that sugar high is going to start to wear off a little bit. Uh, for those of us who have children, we understand what happens when a when a child's coming off their sugar high. Um, but we'll see. And I think that's going to be the challenge for the vice president is how long uh, she and her campaign can keep Democrats unified and moving forward with this level of enthusiasm. And I'm sure Ashley will talk to that. But here's the goal. Here's the end goal for uh, both campaigns, frankly. There are very few states that really matter uh, in a presidential election. And this year is no exception. And so there's two paths to victory, as I see it, uh, that both of these campaigns are going to be focused on. One, the media has dubbed the blue wall, and that's Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin. And if the uh, Harris campaign can pull together the states that she should win, Illinois, New York, California, and a bunch of other uh, states in New England and, and a smattering across the country, those three states will represent uh, her pathway to 270 electoral votes. So that's one way. The other way is what I'm calling the Southern Smile, which is a North Carolina, Georgia, uh, Arizona, Nevada route. And uh, the vice president this week is in uh, Georgia, and I think that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to activate uh, younger voters. They're trying to activate voters of color in a uh, pathway to try to uh, create another avenue for her to win. Problem is, those are also states that are, at this point in time, uh, leaning towards former President uh, Donald Trump. And there are also states that Trump is going to be working on. So we we see, you know, there's eight or nine states that are going to matter. Um, and we're going to see both of these campaigns focus all of their attention, all their firepower on those states. So it's a uh, now it's a competition. It's not a walk away. And let the games begin. Yeah, Ashley, do you, what do you think about the sugar high uh, crash next week? Is well, that... I mean, all I can say is it's a whole lot of sugar, Pam, and we're way up high. So, um, you know, the vice president is catching fire in a way, honestly, that we've never seen in, in political history before. I mean, she's raised in a matter of one week $200 million, which is completely off the charts. And to give you some context, I believe Barack Obama in the in his over the course of his entire first uh, campaign raised $80 million. She's raised $20 million in one week. She's signed up 100,000, over 100,000 volunteers in a matter of week, and they're still having massive calls. Just last night, one of our colleagues was on a call, and there was a hunch, she said there was 100,000 women on that call. So the vice president is is really on fire. The, the money is working to her advantage. The grassroots is working to her advantage. She also has the issues that are on her side. That is abortion. You know, the Republicans have an all out assault on women. J.D. Vance has doubled down on that assault, has made it worse by not only trying to control our bodies, but now insulting women who haven't had kids and can't have children by calling us uh, cat ladies. Uh, the, also, the issue of democracy, democracy being on the line is working to her advantage and freedom. That's the new theme of her campaign, freedom. And she's speaking to the aspirations of the nation, really challenging us to think about who we are as a country and who do we want to be? Do we want to 
go forward or do we want to go backward? Trump represents going back and Kamala Harris represents going forward. And all of that is energizing um, American voters and not just the Democratic base, but also those voters that she needs to actually win the election. The internal polls of the Democrats, oh, the I should say her campaign internal polls are showing that she's plus 19 against Donald Trump among um among uh, voters that are um, that are white educated voters, she's plus 18 with older voters. Those are the voters that are going to make the difference in these states that um, Mike was talking about a little earlier. But she's always also energized the base of the Democratic Party, uh, black and brown voters, women and young voters. I mean, off the charts, she's plus 25 against Trump with young voters, plus 21 against women uh, with, when it comes to women voters. And those are going to be the people that are going to make the difference. And so she's totally energized this race. She's created a permission structure permission structure for the voters who either thought they didn't want to vote in this next election, those Nikki Haley voters who are trying to find a home, and those, again, those um, the base voters of the Democratic Party that were not energized and motivated by Joe Biden. So this is, to Mike's point, this is now a race. It's going to be incredible. I think the things that are working to her benefit also is that there's no perfect time, I don't think, for a woman and a person of color to win this race. She's got the benefit of Joe Biden's record and not the baggage of Joe Biden. So this is going to be incredible. And it's, uh, you know, to quote the Wall Street Journal editorial board that Kamala Harris is completely confounded Republicans and they're sort of having to scrap their old playbook and trying to figure out how to how to um, how to battle against her and get an advantage against her. And it's not really sticking quite yet. So it's going to be exciting to see how this whole thing turns out. Oh, well, I, look, I, I think the playbook hasn't changed for Republicans. It's going to be the same playbook that we were planning on using against uh, Joe Biden, which I'm, I'm dubbed the three eyes, inflation, immigration, and Israel. On the inflationary front, um, I am pleased to hear from, uh, you know, and Ashley talks about the amount of money that uh, Vice President Harris is, has raised versus vis-a-vis uh, -vis, um, the amount of money that uh, former President Obama had raised, except with Biden inflation, it's about the same amount of money, 80 million, 200 million because of uh, Biden Harris inflation. I think they're going to talk about that. Uh, the Republicans are going to be talking about the inflationary effects of the Bi of Bidenomics, of Biden Harrisonomics, if we can make that a word now, um, and immigration, the border. The uh, what has happened at the border over the last uh, three and a half years has been atrocious. And I and as the border czar, whether or not the Democrats like that term or not, and they're abetted by the media and in, in turning that term around, um, the focus of Republicans is going to be ha what has been happening on our southern border. And then finally, um, Israel and Israel's more endemic of all of the um, foreign policy struggles that this administration has had over the last three and a half years. So I think those three things, coupled with some other issues, should be and uh, will be the focus of uh, Republican um, uh, rhetoric and also the push against um, the vice president's campaign. Can I just weigh in here, Pam, because I think the point that Mike is raising is an important one for communicators like us, which is Kamala Harris is going to have to um, make a concerted, very uh, intentional effort to um, not only define herself, but ensure that we're setting the record straight. So if you take those three eyes and you break them down, inflation's at 3%, the lowest it's been in years. The second is immigration. Border crossings are down 40% because of the Biden administration, lower than they were under Trump. And then if you look at Israel, she made a point just recently when she, when Netanyahu, when she, after she met with Netanyahu, and I think the point was really speaks to who Kamala Harris is as a leader, that she sees people. And she said that, and her point was that I can see both both sides here, that it's not a binary choice, that she's been committed to Israel as we have as a nation since she was a child. 
Um, and that commitment will remain firm. But on the same token, we also have to consider the freedom and the desire of the Palestinian people and ensure that we are um, addressing that humanitarian crisis. And the reality is that we can do both of those things too at the same time, that one doesn't compromise the other. So I think, you know, as communicators, her greatest challenge is going to be how do I define myself and then how do I push back on these uh, false na narratives about those three eyes, to Mike's point.